Hey guys, this is David, the Chess Nerd Bird, with another chess video. Uh, so it is Friday, so we are back on to um, chess.com drills. And last time I did one, it was using the outside pass pawn. This time it will be creating an outside pass pawn. And so this tough end game will make you a better all around chess player. Here, white must learn that even though the number of pawns are equal, not all pawns are created equal. White is better equipped to create a healthy and distant pass pawn. And if he uses his outside pass pawn in conjunction with activating the king, white should be able to gobble up the king side pawns while black is worrying about the queen side pawns. So we're going to go ahead and start this. Um, so first thing we want to do is try to create a pass pawn. And so something I forgot to mention is that over here, um, it will actually give you advice based on based on your moves when you're when you're playing this. So we capture it back, and now we're going to activate our king. And here, I'm not sure if I should push that pawn first or if I should try to go for king d4 right now. I think pushing the pawn is best here. Mm. I mean, I think I'm still still winning here, but I think it's going to be a little trickier now. Okay, it just looks like um, I blundered here. And yeah, now I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Black win because he's gonna be able to create a pass pawn and go faster than me. Okay, so this is just losing here. So we're gonna just try to retry this. Okay, so a4, b takes a4, b takes a4, now king d3. And then last time I said king d4 was a better move here. Um, now f4. I'll play just g3. Let's see here. I think just put King C four here. And now I can play a5. Pushing his pawn, and then if his king steps back. Um, I think taking here is, is fine.
And now I've got two pass pawns. If I play a7, he'll play king b7. Then I can play e6. Yeah. Yep, now I can just queen. And this is just the winning for me now. So I'll just lock down the pawns. We'll corral his king. And win by checkmate. Okay, so let's go back and look at these moves here. Um, so a4, so you create the outside pass pawn, and then you activate your king. You shut down the king side for the pawns. And then once his king is moving back towards the center, then you push the outside pass pawn And then you're able to just queen a pawn. And once you have the queen, then you're then you're easily winning. So so that's why I messed up the first time. Um, I tried to push the outside pass pawn too quickly and ended up losing, um, as you saw, because my king just wasn't wasn't fast enough for all that. Um, so I'm gonna try it one more time just to make sure that I have this down. All right, so my move is so a4. So first step, create the pass pawn. Next step, activate my king. Next step is to shut down counterplay on the king side. Okay, and here he plays it a little differently. And this is the nice thing about using these um, um, drills is that you can, or if I should just push past. Or I can just take. And then simply move my king back. And I'll pick up this pawn. So I think you have to be careful about in this position is not leaving yourself with a um, with a rook pawn, thus allowing a draw and I think in this case I have done the very thing I said make sure you don't do yeah there's no way for me to to win this one now okay so I'll play this out just so you guys see how why this is not winnable um but yeah i can't i can't ever advance because black has the opposition so okay we're going to retry this so that time he played he played king a5 quickly and that threw me off so we're going to try this one more time here okay so king d4 and that's the nice thing about these is the computer doesn't always play the same moves so you get to you get to see um, different ways of, of handling the position. Uh, now I think I can play a5. Yep. I'm gonna play f4.
then G4. I'm going to play king c5, and now king d6, king e7, oh I see that was a, that was a blunder because he gets to create his pass pawn, which is going to be faster than my pass pawn by one move. And now black is winning this. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time because He's playing moves that I just, I'm not taking my time to calculate on and, and figure out. And that's the thing with king and pawn endgames is if you trade down into a king and pawn endgame, you better know that you are winning um, before you get down into these, these endgames. And this is something that, you know, you can read books on, you can, you can do all of these things, but if you don't practice these and, and you don't, put all you have into it then um okay we're gonna see if we can get him to go after this pawn And I think I just ended up in another not so good position here. Yep. Yeah, just losing that again. So this one, this one's obviously very tricky for me. Um, Cause the problem is, I, I guess I'm just not sure as to when exactly I should be pushing. Right, so this is the best move was king c4 in that position. So now we'll play g4. So it says that was the best move. Now we'll play h4. And I'm pretty sure in this position I have this this breakthrough. But maybe not. Maybe we've got to take back with the H pawn. All right, so 
I think I finally figured out the key. So the thing is to keep that A pawn on the board. Use your pawns on the king side to trade down. And then you can win with that with that outside pass pawn. And so here we're going to checkmate with the king and queen. Fairly simple. The queen is powerful, but it cannot checkmate by itself. So you need the king. Okay, so I think I'm going to practice this some more, um, but I think you guys got a good idea of kind of how to play that. Um, as you can see, it's not as easy as it always looks. So again, when you're getting into those king upon in games, just make sure you are winning. And so that's knowing, knowing winning, winning types of positions in king and pawning games, or you know if you can draw versus having pieces on the board, then trade down into those king and pawning games. But otherwise, um, work on king and pawning games because they're they're very tricky. Um, you have to know exactly what you're doing. They're simple, but they're they're complex. So they're simple just in the fact that there's not that many pieces on the board, but they're complex because you've got to be able to calculate very clearly. And as we saw here, I just didn't do a good job of that. So um, something to keep working on if I want to continue to get better um, and, and get up into a class A player, much less, you know, getting into an expert expert level. So um, hope you learned something from this video. Hope you learned something from my mistakes. And until next time, this is the Chess Nerd Bird. And hope you have a good day. If you like the video, make sure you subscribe, um, leave a comment, and let me know if you like this format. Thanks so much. Have a good day.